this is what you guys tune in for. I know the other stuff over there is kind of measly and minor compared to what goes on over here, but finally, finally after months of them around, I finally got my stuff over on my side. This is where the real magic happens. Over there, that's just big boy cut and paste. Over here, that's where it's all gonna go down. Guys from Exalt are here and they came over and did some spray outs to see if we can get these colors to match. So this is our first shot at it and these are our spray outs using the Exalta, but I think we're gonna have to definitely have to do some tinting. They have a camera that'll read the paint and it'll tell you everything that's in the paint and kind of put together a base formula. But did they read ours? Yeah, they read our cards and this is what the camera said to mix. Okay. So from here, we need to do some tinting. Our camera will do what we call a hit on a hit. I can reread our spray panels and it'll see what it made versus the originals and yep. remake the adjustment because it knows it didn't get it close enough. Back in the day, we used to have to just put a little bit in, check it, put a little bit in, check it. We might do And we may too. still have to do a little <laughs> of that, but once we do all, all the weights will be recorded as the right. same formula. Super cool, man. The place is a wreck, man. Look at this. That's what happens when people work. Oh, I don't know anything about What's that. What's going on in your office? <laughs> let's, let's go look at your office. I'm sure it's dusty. So C10s have been done over and over and over and over. They're the Mustangs of trucks. So it's like everybody's got one. Everybody's had one. You know, they've just been done to the hilt. It's real important that we get our body work and our filler work all done as nicely as possible because I guarantee you at SEMA there's gonna be some really, really, really nice E10s and it's just, they're everywhere. So the competition is extremely high. So it's really important to me and to the guys that we get it the best we can, especially in the time frame that we got because we were cutting it tight and most of them are year long builds, two year builds. And this is, we're looking at like three months to do this thing. You know, body work's gonna be really important because that's the first thing we're gonna look at. Gas monkey gouache. Oh, did you pay for it? I paid the fifth. <laughs> so you didn't pay for it. <laughs> I didn't pay for mine either. We got the bed floor ready. Um, we're gonna hit the tops of these doors. Cause hopefully soon we'll have the cab here. And then we can bolt the doors and start blocking everything. Get the cab body work and start blocking into that. Thing is, if uh, all this is sprayed and I have nothing to do, I'm gonna go wear those dudes out. I'll just roll in there and be like, why is it just done yet? Why isn't it done? <laughs> we gotta go to see my Woo! Gotta hurry up. Woo! <laughs> That's gonna end up on Why YouTube, you isn't it? God dang it. I think everybody's pretty tired already. You tired? Ready to go. Okay, so the rest of us are tired. But no, we did pretty good. We got a lot of stuff in high build and then got a lot of stuff blocked again, so, and then ready for second round if we need it. So it's a killer Saturday afternoon, just barely. And uh, we're here at C10s in the park in uh, Waxahachie, Texas. Uh, came out here with uh, Josh and he brought the family. Gonna see some uh, C10s, maybe try to buy uh, a couple of things. And uh, the big thing is, but while I was making the show, I was never able to be a part of this as it was growing and growing. And now it's like a major freaking event. There are literally thousand trucks here, maybe more. And uh, of every shape and size of C10 you can imagine, this is a very, very cool event that I've never gotten to come to, so I'm pretty excited. Let's go in and check it out.
Look at this green on green dually. You know I like that. Oh, I dig it. Green on green, man. You know me. What would you think that this truck's worth? Honestly, forget 80, the truck. 80, 85. 80 to 85 grand. Wow. I got to start finding these things. They're out there. I know they are. You'll put your cool. touch Glenn, to it. Good to meet you. Is this pretty much how it uh, was? The door had a little bit of rust. And, uh, you can see I patched in uh, a little bit on the fenders a little bit, but yeah. It's not a whole lot, though. No, not bad at all. What do you want for it? Sell it for sale for 150. LT4, six feet automatic, drove it all the way from Oklahoma. High school AC. Did you say 150? Yeah, I just sold one to a guy for 150. Wow. Not even a cameo. No, that's, I love it. I love it for the hobby. I love it for, for all kinds of reasons, but holy cow. Yeah. How much? 150. Yeah, I just sold one to a football player, Robert Nikovich, wasn't even a cameo. Has the LT5 with a 10-speed automatic. The yeah. drivetrain was 52,000. I mean, no, I get it. You yeah. can add up yeah. the parts. Yeah, 30k for the you know the the chassis 30k, drivetrain yeah. 50. I had to pay 15k for the truck sitting in the field. No motor, no training either. They're hard to find. 58, one year only. I hope money. you get 150, because uh, because that's freaking rad. And it it it, I know it's worth 150. And everybody else here would be, you know, mouth open, gaping, like, oh, my God, that's crazy. Shit, you put in the manpower, you put in the cost of the parts that you bought, yep. and then you put them all together and you build it. And how that's it drives, really, that's when it sells. I get that's the guy it. in it with money, drives it, fucking 600 horsepower, blows the tires off, ice cold AC, and it sells itself. You got oh, a guy yeah. with money, man, you know what I mean? It's badass. I Come by the it. shop anytime, yeah. man. That was a long night. It was long. It was long and a lot of sand, <gasps> but we're getting it. Filing primer. We're what? Four weeks out now, probably. So I mean, we're cutting it down to the freaking wire, especially seeing how we got the Ferrari to do too. But it is exciting to finally see it going into primer. So mesmerizing right now. Well, we're here with Mike. He's picking up a car for Chris Randall over at Hee Haw Customs. I guess Richard worked out a deal and he's giving him the Southwestern Bell truck. So all the time and shit me and Kenny did to pull this thing out. At least he's going to a good home. Chris is a kind of a humble, small town guy. Doesn't yeah. have a lot of people uh, that know about him and yeah. he does really, really cool work. Heck yeah. Well, maybe he can work out something with this thing, but whoo, it's rough. I didn't ever want to build it, but it was neat to see it out in the yard all the time because that bed's really cool. But hopefully they'll do something cool with it. this paint into my Raptor liner and I can get a, an idea of what it's going to look like because ultimately I want to do underneath the cab that way as well but I want to make sure that it looks right looks the way I want it to so I'm going to test it on the inside floor of the cab so it'll just be a lot nicer. So we got the inside of the bit uh, cab bed line and all that stuff about to pull it out so Mikey can start wet sanding on stuff um, the guys have been here all night so they're super tired 
Um, I wasn't here all night, so I'm not super tired, but it's like everybody's kind of in the zombie mode. So a lot of things are getting done, but a lot of things aren't getting finished. So we're trying to regroup right now and come together. So we're gonna get this out and then start getting some parts in so I can shoot some gold and Mikey and then we're gonna keep wet sanding. So we got a long damn day. Okay, so right now I'm prepping the chassis, so what I'm going to do, uh, I've got some acetone. I'm going to wipe the chassis down with the acetone to help strip it of any of the oils that were sprayed on it to keep it from rusting. Uh, so I'll wipe it down real good with the acetone and then I'm going to do some DA sanding with a 180 because the chassis has a lot of lines in it. I'm going to try to smooth that out and just prep it with the 180 pad. Um, after I DA the whole entire thing with 180, we'll take it over to the paint booth. So we got all our gold stuff done and, and we flat cleared it so it was able to dry enough that I could get all those parts out of the booth and I still have to do the cab which is like the firewall and the jams and the dash and the inside is all going to be the flat gold as well but while the guys are sanding that I got a little bit of time so I'm going to shoot these bumpers real quick because I'm dying to see what our main body color is going to be what it's going to look like all sprayed out but this is it it's like uh I think they're calling it gas monkey beige, but it's kind of how I like my coffee to look. You know, a little bit of coffee and a, and a shitload of creamer. So I'm gonna call it Mike's coffee beige. And then Richard can call it whatever he wants, gas monkey beige. But Mike always coffee creamer beige sounds cooler to me. I would spray a sealer over everything before I put on base coat. And the reason I do that is because of like sand throughs or different colors like how this is green on the back or it's been sanded through on an edge. But this stuff right here over just regular primer is covering like a champ. So I just wanted to stop and tell you that if you see me doing something different. thinking the firewall gold you know the engine bay gold all that stuff and I was thinking to do the flat gold on the chassis part of me is feeling this cream like do I do the cream on the chassis do we do the gold on the chassis I don't want to do one of the other colors on the chassis because then it's like gonna stick out too much but I think the gold and this will complement each other really well so and it's toned down it's not like you're gonna look in there and be like oh goddamn chassis you know so chassis is beautiful but I don't want it like to slap you in the face so I need to make a decision is this how you want me to do this it's a head camera Oh! So we got the chassis in the paint booth. We got all the chassis components in the paint booth, minus the rear end. Um, I'm gonna work on getting all that stuff painted today. We were gonna go gold with the flat, but started thinking about it, and I think that the cream is gonna be better because if they get any oil on that flat uh, clear, then it's gonna be hard to clean. Cream is gonna be hard to clean as well, but it being glossy, it'll wipe off easier, and it's just an easier thing to do. So. 
gonna get in there. I'm gonna try to get that stuff epoxied and painted today so that I can get it back over to those guys. And then right after that, we're rolling in the cab and I'm gonna do a bunch of stuff on the cab. So it's already, it's only noon and I'm already tired, um, but that's how it is at Gas Monkey Gura. Are you ready for the sex girls? The fine, fine, supersonic wrist. Those guys are already got them the chassis while they're getting that painted. Uh, I asked Josh to come over here to help me out with his third member for the uh, Curry rear end. When he's it fired up, he built a lot of nine inch boards. I'm gonna throw a little twist on the rear end paint scheme. Uh, we're gonna do the chassis color on this, which is the uh, like the light beige. But then we're gonna do the third member in gold and then the drive shaft in gold, so it'll set it off a little bit. But before we do that, like Rick said, we need to blow this third member out of it and I have to finish welding some tabs that I might have got distracted and chased a squirrel on. Way to call me out, Ricky. Is that payback for not singing karaoke with you? No, I'm just saying that we still gotta weld the tabs. It's so payback. It's still time. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this after Mike paints it. <laughs> Here, I don't wanna lose those. Here, I don't wanna lose those. Here, I don't wanna lose that. He <laughs> no. Wowzers! That Whoop. is why I got help. It's a little heavy. Look at that pattern. It's kind of funny here. We're build a badass GMC, and the the way to do that is Curry rear end, which is essentially a Ford nine inch rear end that uh, Ford came out with a long time ago, and Chevy still hasn't done anything better. So everybody knows you go with a Curry Ford nine inch rear end when you're doing your Chevy build, and we also have a Ford rack and pinion. So the front of our truck and the back of our truck is Ford. I hate you, Ricky. <laughs> Score one for the Ford guys. What motor do y'all swap in all y'all's cars? Well, I mean, there's people out there that choose to do the LS <laughs> because it's a simple engine, simple to swap. They'll never admit it. What are you doing, buddy? Huh? You filming this gorgeous chassis? For the gram, homie. Hey. You killed it. Hey, like Ricky. It? Ricky. Hey. This looks like glass. Between you and Ricky, this, this looks like, like glass. Wait, did you say glass or ass? If you see anything, let me know. Because when I was clearing in there, man, it was, it was tough to see. Okay. Like, I don't, my eyes were like, like the. Do we need to get you better lighting in there? No, I'm just old. Do we need to get you bifocals? Maybe. Richard's got a bunch on his desk. I bet he does. You're concentrating on an area and mm -hmm. you're flooding another area and you're trying to work this area and da 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 da. But Brandon, I want you to look at this real quick. You can see reflections. That's not black, that's not white where you can see these. This is a tan and you can still see reflections off it, Mike. So I think we're okay. I mean, for something that we didn't have time to like prime and block out and body work and do all that jazz. Yeah. It looks pretty good. Looks way better than we send it off for powder coat. Agreed. No, it's way better than powder. It's it, and I'm glad that we went with this and we went with the gloss. So I'm gonna roll the cab in. I'm gonna work on the uh, firewall and that stuff. And then I would say tomorrow, let's mount the suspension back on it and put the stuff back on it. And then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna do the bottom of the cab. So then we can put it on and I'm, I'm hoping I don't have to take it back off. Cause then I wanna do the insides of the doors and I wanna hang the doors and I'm hoping that they don't have to come back off. That's kind of the game plan here, but whatever we can do to save time. We'll see. Yeah, I'm trying okay. to save time. Hey, you're gonna yeah. it's still soft. Come on. It is. I'm yeah. just rubbing it. My well. koi painted, it'll be alright. <laughs> Wednesday night, 12 o'clock. 
I guess better be considered Thursday morning. Um, I just poured the last bit of gold and we are about to paint the bed. It's a time crunch situation here all the time. And now, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Psych, motherfucker, I got gold right here. I'm always prepared. I got it, I got it. We're gonna have to throw this on the shaking bait. Get out. Woo! Get out. Hey, here. Take a shit. Get out. Got the frame ready. Now I'm reassembling the suspension, A arms, airbags, shocks, rack and pinion. I'm gonna really start building this thing for the final assembly. All right guys, so earlier I was kind of bantering with Josh, you know, and giving him a hard time about Ford and Chevy and how Ford had a better rear end. Um, so in this truck, we have a Curry rear end. So I wanted everybody to, and myself even, we want to know what's so special about a Curry and who better than to find that out from than someone from Curry. Hey guys, I'm John Hanson from Curry Enterprises and uh, I'm here to actually check out this beautiful chassis that they've made, but also to answer any questions that you might have in regards to Ford 9 insurance. What I'm kind of curious about is, you know, some guys, they might go buy a Ford 9 inch rear end out of a junkyard and think they got a solid rear end. Right. Like, what is that compared to a Curry? Nowadays, you actually can't do that anymore. So because they haven't made a Ford 9 inch rear end in anything factory since the mid 80s, right? So we actually, way back in the day when we got started, we used to refurbish Ford 9 inch rear ends. We would actually stockpile good refurbishable stuff, but along the way, we realized there's no more good Ford 9 inch stuff to refurbish. So we started making it on our own. And then from that point on, it was like, okay, well, how do we make it better, right? Let's use better materials, better craftsmanship, better steel. We can machine our own housing ends. We can start making our own axle shafts. And then we actually, we designed our own housing. So why not take something that was already revolutionary in the automotive world let's go ahead and reinvent it and make it even that much better so we started well it's so customizable right we can build them for anything so we started okay well let's let's make it look like a nine inch because it's got to look right in a hot rod right but let's go ahead and use better steel thicker steel let's bend it and form it in ways that actually makes it structurally stronger and so we started doing that in about the 90s and here we are you know, 2023, and we're, we've learned a lot about how to actually make this style of rear end adaptable to drag race, off-road, hot rods, you name it, right? So we've come a long way uh, in reinventing the Ford 9-inch rear end. And what you're seeing today is one of our best things that we do, right? This is a fabricated Ford 9-inch. So instead of like your sheet metal that's kind of formed around to look old school, this is actually a bent fabricated sheet metal that just adds rigidity to the housing. So you can throw anything you want at this style of rear end all day long. We're excited to have you guys in our project and I think Gas Monkey's gonna well represent Curry with Absolutely. this build. Well, we're proud to be involved with you guys and uh, thank you for running our rear end and uh, we're excited to see it at the SEMA show this year. What the hell is that? Special delivery. 
Come on. Stop the paint. The radiator. I know you want it. Is it radiator or radiator? Well. Depends on what it's on, I think. Yeah. Or who made so. the or who made it. Like that one's a pretty pretty rad one. I'd say that it's one's a, a radiator. It's a wizard. It's a radiator. Wizard radiator. Because it's, it's wicked. Rad, wicked. It's rad. It's cool. Yeah. But now like radiator on say. Like your old grandma trying to stay warm. <clears throat> what? A radiator, you know, like the old heaters that radiated oil or something, you know? Huh? Keep you warm. You know, you never heard of that? The radiator? Don't you have central heat in there? No. Your grandma. She had a radiator. I have a I really not a radiator. I really have no idea what you're talking about. Really? No. You're not familiar with those, huh? In the olden days they used to have like radiators, that's what they called them. The only thing I remember back in the day was the one that had the little white um, honeycomb stuff on it and it, it it heated up. Yeah, see that's a radiator because it has oil in it. But mine didn't have oil in it, it was gas. Maybe it doesn't have to have a qualification of what's in it to be called a radiator, you know? Hmm. Suzuki? Had oil cooled bikes. What's in the radiator? It was oil. Not coolant, but it's still coolant. It's just oil. Engine oil, remember? Yeah. 92. Now I'm even more confused than I was five seconds ago. Yeah. So your grandma had a Yamaha in her house? No. Maybe. Probably. It sounded like she had a motorcycle with a heater on it. It sounded like me. Oh! She had a motorcycle with a heater on it. Radiator had oil. No. Motorcycles in the 90s were oil cooled. And your grandma had a 90s Some motorcycle. I want to give you a quick update. We have put the headers on, check fitment there. And these are some really cool headers from Ultimate Headers. We really like the flange and the way they 90 out. It's have a lot more clearance for our spark plug boot. Now I'm just bending some fuel line, getting ready to run it from the uh, tank all the way up here to the front. Finally getting ready to finish our paint. Like this is it. This is the final straw, body work's done. Insides are all painted. And we are about to seal it and put gold on it. It's gonna be kind of confusing for a lot of people, but with sealers, if you don't get a base coat on top of them, they will, um, sometimes they'll react or act funny and we don't have time for that. So I'm going to actually base the entire truck out in gold. Um, and then after that, we're gonna go put the truck together which is also gonna be a little bit confusing for some of you guys um, that don't do this, but as the process goes on, you'll start to understand how we're gonna lay out our stripes. So I do things a little bit backwards. Some people would paint it body color and then do stripes, but I like to do stripes and then afterwards come back with body color, especially on a light color like this cream, because if I was to get metallic on it, it would kind of ruin my paint job and I ain't having that. So we got the cab, the doors, and the fenders are all in gold. We're gonna put all that stuff on the truck, bolt everything back together, and then we can start laying out our stripe pattern. Uh, it's just not safe to take measurements to try to do it that way, so we're gonna do it this way, so we know that when we go back together with it, everything lines up and it's all good to go. So we got most of the body put together and now it's, we're, I'm trying to figure out the stripes. Uh, I got here a little bit early and kind of got a, st a start on it, but I think I may have gone too wide on my stripes according to this, but I'm trying to stay out of this funky spot on the wheel well. So I'm trying something a little bit different and going a little bigger on the stripe, but it's kind of screwing me when I get up to here because that's a lot of, a lot of green up front and that ain't going to work. So. <laughs> It's part of it. Lay it out, take it off. Lay it out, take it off. It looks smoother. This looks funky, but it's not. I just take the tape and I'm like, it appears on the truck perfect and ready for paint we got here oh, 
Barry, Barry coming in on a mission. <laughs> well, for up, real, man? man. I got like 15 right. days to get this thing done, man. Oh, we get it. <laughs> What's, up, man? What's up, bro? So our buddies at Caracol went ahead and printed us a piece to test fit. So it's, okay. I think it's impregnated carbon fiber. So no way. Yeah. So we can feed cool, this man. for a race truck later. Sure. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Let's, let's look. Are you touching over there? No. Yeah. Yeah. The bottom lip is out, but like a about a half inch. Yeah. That's why we didn't want to make it out of metal first. It's the beauty of 3D printing right there. So Barry, your line that you have going down mm -hmm. is good, but then when it gets to this bottom, it like rolls out. Yeah, I see that over here. Okay. Yep. Is that just part of the mold, or is it in? No, it's it's in my design. So okay, if that would just follow that contour, I think we'd be fine. Yeah, it needs to just keep going straight yeah. down. Yeah, if that follows that, I think we're we're money on that. So we're just talking about taking this back, right? Yep. Follow that straight line down instead of that bottom curve. That must be the where the scan of that beat uh, up grill yeah. might have been. Bent. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy seeing this thing finally and seeing all the look how protruded you have that and then that going in. Yeah. This is like a look at that. Yeah. That's no. rad looking dude. I did mess with the design a little bit and okay. I took these legs off of this centerpiece because it kind of looks like an eye. Okay. And yeah. And I figured it might just. Yeah, I agree with you. Yep. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And I have the eagle right now, right here. Yeah. So. That's fine. That works for you? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, for everything that y'all have done for us, I think that a little eagle <laughs> would be okay. Are we not doing marker lights? We're doing something different. Markers. They were in the scan, right? Oh yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, they're, just got filled. They're there. They're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order to print it, they gotta get rid of a few features. Yeah. All the holes in here. We'll How long was their print time? You know, if I had to guess, I'd say it was 40 hours. I sent you the time lapse 40? video. 40? Yeah, it sounds like a lot, right? But you don't realize that that's really only two days, and you don't have to be there babysitting it. You know, yeah. you just hit print and walk away, and two days later you got a grill. But they actually wow. printed this thing over in Italy, and then shipped it to us here. So pretty cool. Well, Barry, y'all knocked it out of the park again, dude. This is crazy looking. Yeah, now Do we just gotta make one out of metal. Did you bring any other goodies with you today? I was gonna bring the letters, man, but I forgot them. We actually were in the middle of a tour and, uh, you know, I had to just make it a quick He's escape. just teasing us. <laughs> it's gonna make us wait till the last minute to see him. I think I'm ready to get some color on it. Mm -hmm. I like the, the pattern you have going though. I think it's really gonna set this off. October 5th, about to be six o'clock. Mike's about to start laying paint. We just showed our rendering. Mm -hmm. We just showed our rendering for our other car that we still have to get done. It's not done. I got everything taped up and I'm about to shoot the, uh, the green, so. I don't know if Richard said to do this, but Promax did Sage, and they did Gas Monkey Garage Sage, thinking that I won't know what green is. I'm sorry, but it is green. It's sages, but it's green. They're trying to trick me so I won't have a problem painting it, but I'm gonna paint it anyways. But you know how much I love green.
Richard's gonna bitch because the truck's not done. Two baby, let's go. got everything all the color on and all the clear on on our cab and our doors I still got to do the fenders and the bed and the cowl and the hood but all that can wait for now as long as I get this stuff over to them then they can start putting the truck together they can wire they can do their plumbing they can install everything and then afterwards we can do all that stuff all right guys so it is a uh, Sunday October 8th it is almost 11 o'clock in the morning showed up ricky got the whole engine plumbed wired everything's in we're ready for the cab now mike stayed a little bit late last night so let's go take a peek at how far he got <whistles> bro Woo! that looks so good he even got clear on it colors landed out pretty damn good i'm liking it i'm liking it this is gonna be so rad dude i can't wait to put this on all the hours of body work in and late nights and everything. Everything's starting to come together. You start seeing the vision. This is when it starts getting really exciting. Paint is looking phenomenal. Mike's really laying it down cool. He's got just a little bit left to go before we head over and we start the reassembly. You know, we're talking interior, exhaust, air ride, audio, sound deadening, all the stuff that goes into a true build. And also on top of everything, we got the tester build going on and it is a long way away, dude. This is a completely one-off custom car. You know, we're chopping the top off, we're making it EV, all the goodies. Be sure to watch the episode coming out this Thursday. It's gonna be crazy, episode two. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff and follow the journey to SEMA. These next three weeks is crunch time.